Okay, so I certainly cannot promise that we will not be interrupted. She's laying right here. I've given her medicine. She won't eat this morning. She won't eat her food. She's eating a ton of treats, though. And um, we're having a sad day, too. Louie is going to a foster a meet and greet. I guess they have these ones where they have all the rescue. People bring in the fosters and all these people who want to go rescue a dog that day go to these events. And so she's thinking that Louis may not come home. Um, so anyways, but I kept telling the universe uh, to give me some kind of guidance on Louis because, um, you know, what we kept thinking, Stella needs a friend. And, um, you know, she started fostering these puppies next door and Stella goes over and plays with Louis. And, um, and Louis and Stella seem to really like each other. So I kept thinking, oh, well, you know, he would be a good companion. But right now, you know, I just spent $4,500 uh, getting surgery. And then, um, and now I'm getting caught up. Like I just got all my T's re, uh, redone and all of um, Stella's stuff, like her glucosamine and stuff. So trying to just get everything back in order. And then next month is my first time to be able to go and travel really and the car has an appointment next week i think it's next week it's the end it's the last week of this month the car has an appointment and he's going to check and see and um hopefully have enough for that and i don't know if i'll have to stretch out it just depends because he said that he's going to look and figure out what's wrong but he doesn't know how long it's going to take and so um i said well yeah, how much or something? And the girl said, well, usually it's like 75, but since it's like all day, I don't know. But, you know, the universe can have him figured out in an hour. So, you know, it's all dependent on what you are meant to experience. And just like with Louie, you know, I keep feeling like, you know, things are about to change in my life. And, um, you know, I don't know if it is a smart thing to get another dog right now. And just like when I had gotten Jack, I thought, oh, like this is going to be so perfect. And he just came into our life. But I didn't realize like he just came into our life to teach us some lessons and to help somebody else out for a while. And he went back home. And so, and then Louie, I was like, okay, well, if it's meant to be, then more around my birthday because in June I got to go and go see my grandkids and stuff. I haven't seen them. And especially when they're just like one years old, like the last time I saw them, some of them weren't even walking. <laughs> so you know, there's been some big changes and, and then you don't want them to forget you. And some of the other grandparents are on that side of the mountain, I think. And they see them. Well, one is in California and she flies in and the other one is closer to them. And so gets to drive um, my ex. He doesn't, I don't, he goes and sees him. I don't know. He goes and sees him like a couple times a year. He, it's like, it's just different because it's like, I'm sure he looks at him like his grandkids and his daughters don't plan on having kids. But these are the girls, you know, he raised these girls from the time they were like five and seven years old. And so, um, well, seven and a half, so five and seven and a half years old. And then, uh, so they have a tumultuous relationship too. You know, there's been a lot of, you know, anytime you have a step parent, there's a lot of drama. That is one thing I have found is, um, that's another thing that just shows me is we're not supposed to live in broken relationships. When we go in and start creating families, we're not supposed to break them apart. You know, we should be more set and sure of who we want to raise our kids with before we're just having kids. But, you know, that just has not been on our programming. <laughs> That's why there's things that we have to notice that we, we want to change. Because, yeah, it's not good for the kids. It's not good for society. It's, you know, it's just not, it's not a healthy, productive way. What kind of society do we want? We want a broken down, crumbling one? Or we want one that's healthy and thriving where people, you know, get what they need and are taken care of. And, um, so anyways, uh, I kept about Louie, I kept just putting it out in the universe because I had already had decided this month was my getting caught up and I was doing good enough that I got my appointment for my car and I sent out all these copper cup gifts, which, you know, they're not cheap. 
that's why, you know, that is kind of a gift because other people don't go and spend that kind of money on themselves when they're just struggling to get their bills paid. And so when you give them something that's really good for them, I'm thinking I'm, uh, Christmas gifts, because they're all still into Christmas, is um, going to be bags of uh, mineral salt. <laughs> mineral salts or copper cups that's your that's what you're getting <laughs> so um i'm just gonna start giving stuff that's good for people that is beneficial and so many people they don't know it's not you know it's it's so new too and a lot of us talking about it we are well now they're heavy going on shutting it down <laughs> shut it down but um you know, we are, we are all thought to be so strange, but now they're fighting hard because the wave is coming in. So they're trying to put up, they're trying to sandbag the wave of energy that's coming through, but they can't, you know, we've all caught, you know, the, enough of us have caught on that the, the ripple goes, the wave is getting bigger and bigger. The wave is it's coming in. It is much bigger. That is like why we see these storms in our in our world getting bigger and bigger and they're getting bigger and bigger they're getting a lot more rapid and wilder because that is the energy on the planet that's what we're doing that is a part of the awakening so when you think like well because they're still like i can't i still can't even fucking go on tiktok and even um post it is so weird every time like even when i think of something you know and then i'll be like I don't know. Everything is so weird. The energy is so weird. Like I went on there to see like, is anything going on? It is the same fucking shit. So I shared one of the videos. So there's a hotel footage. Isn't it crazy too? How, how many years later is this footage coming out? Like all these people keep their stuff under wraps, the horrible stuff they do. And uh, Diddy uh, going in the hall and tagging. I don't know who all these people are. I think it's one of his exes, but she seems to be famous. I don't know. She's a singer too. I don't know. But he attacks her in the hall, drags her like by her hair back into the room. It's like intense. And that is fuck so much about that. Another thing people are just still like freaking out about is this um, the speaker at this college graduation. The one, there was one that was wacky because um, they couldn't get the names right. <laughs> All this stuff is just about awakening. It, it, it's funny, but it's so outrageous to people. But the um, this one was the the speaker guy, and he's this total conservative, right wing kind of. Um, and you got to remember, too, universities are basically full of they're they're creating a liberal mindset. They're creating a different kind of wave of energy that they're trying to go against this. So it's like this total extreme coming in to speak to them. And so many people are outraged. I can't even tell you how many fucking live videos I saw today discussing it. Like They're all discussing it. They're debating and people are talking about it. But see, that's what it's all about. All this stuff is awakening. All this stuff is get people to talk about it. And it isn't because somebody's wrong or right. It's inside of you. And we all have little variables. Because, yeah, through my perspective of what I have lived in my life, yeah, I think that we got to be a lot more thoughtful before we are having kids. We need to be a lot more stronger in our relationships. We need to not... And, and then besides, that part of our society that these relationships have all been ways to teach us and help us grow. And so all of the things that we encountered were all things that were supposed to happen. You know, broken families, broken things with kids, the, the government taking over the kids, the universities creating so much division and making their own little army and uh in directing the people like there's so much more stuff coming out with universities and the people involved and it's just gonna keep going it's gonna keep getting bigger and bigger too just as the waves of energy just keep getting bigger and bigger like i couldn't believe how many lives today it was just like one after another these debate 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 and um and yeah, to me, I I think of it as being, um, I, like these women are being so outraged, like it's minimizing a woman by saying about her running her home. 
being a housewife. Like they have put that into such a negative connotation in people's programming into their mind that they don't look at it. Like, I mean, that is a, a power right there. You are in so much control when you're running the household. Like people have, you know, their households aren't being run. And, um, Ian, ideally, like, even when one of the times when I got divorced and I was a nurse, because I, you know, I'm a relationship junkie, that I, um, I kept saying, I don't want a husband. I want a wife. A wife is what we all need. Somebody who's at home running shit so that you don't have so much to do. And uh, taking care of meals, taking care of shopping, organizing things, being there for the workmen and all that stuff. So, and that's when I was a workaholic. <laughs> that's when I was like, I got to get to work. I've got work to do. I've got money to make. <laughs> like I didn't care about any fucking thing else. And, um, you know, just ask my kids, I guess. And uh, so I think that you is, um, uh, you know, a housewife is a luxury, most people can't afford to have a housewife. Most people is like, sorry, honey, you know, I wish that you could stay home, but you got to go to work. And it just is, that's the way that they kept moving society and then coming in the back door with, um, Gloria fucking, what's her name? The, if, if her name was Gloria, Gloria Swanson's coming to my mind. That's not a Gloria I'm talking about, but, um, and if Gloria is even her name, but she is, I've got all these different images popping into my mind, actresses who played her, what she looked like and stuff. But she was like a CIA kind of plant thing. That was all a structured thing of, um, because homes were, okay. Cause you think about this is, uh, a lot of women the when they were married, there wasn't so much divorce. Like women didn't just get divorced all the time, which, you know, that created men behaving badly and women being stuck. And like, that was a whole movement for women to have to pull free from because that went in such a toxic direction. But we're talking about, you know, more of how to fix things. Like we can look and see what happened. And it was, you know, the takedown of the family structure because, uh, women wouldn't be running and getting divorced all the time. They would be a lot more apt to trying to make it work out, to adapt, to both people having to figure out how to adapt. Although, you know, there was always the abusive stuff that also went on. But that is also a part of our hidden part of our society of pain, of men feeling overwhelmed and not being able to talk about it and feeling pain and worried and they strike out at anybody who takes another thing from them pulls another you know asks them another question and they fall apart they're on the hair trigger they're at the end of their rope and so you know there's parts of our society that definitely need to be fixed about that lots of different things and that is a you know kind of an individual thing too you know, do you need more time to yourself? Do you need more time for hobbies? Do you need more, you know, and, and, um, it, the biggest thing too is going to be the, the financial collapse because that's going to bring us back into being able to have more, um, homes that are more lenient, lenient in a, a in a kind of casual manner where it's not so like, hurry, get there, go there, get, you know, it's just like everything is like a fucking twister. Everybody's lives. Oh, we've got to get to Girl Scouts and then we got to get over to soccer and then we got to get to piano and then we're, we're going to stop at McDonald's on the way home before we, you know, and, and people, uh, you know, and I was part of it too. People oftentimes feel like, you know, I, I, we watched a movie. We watched a movie as a family. So that was our family time. Now to realize like how much of the movies was about programming and, and plus the uncomfortable moments that they created and what we kept adapting to. Like, fuck, I remember that starting when I was a kid sitting on the couch and they'd bring something on the movie. Just people making out and getting right in their faces and it was just like, oh, this is so gross. My mom and dad are sitting here like to keep making that. What is that called when they try and make it like 
where we just don't care, you know, oh, well, it's just another kissing, it's just another fucking, it's just another murder, it's just another, you know, all that stuff that they were trying to get us to just, like, disassociate, just accept it. Ah, that's just the way it is. <laughs> what are you talking about? They're X-rated at this point. Everything is just, like, hardcore. And, uh, but we, you know, as a society... Because even when I've said stuff, you know, I get called like a prude and, you know, old fashioned and stuff like that. But, you know, there's some things about old fashioned that we need to bring back into our society. And, um, but so they wanted to get the women out of the house because houses were being run and there was relationships formed and there was way too many moms involved at school. Like, Jesus Christ, you got bake sales, PTA, you got the moms who are involved. They were a part of the school. And so they couldn't have that. You know, make women feel like, well, you got to do more with your life. Like, this isn't enough, really, because we're building communities and we're making safe communities. So it seems pretty productive to me. So we're just going to jack up the prices of everything. At the same time, we're going to keep telling women, get out there, you know, look at, and, and then they push the propaganda of like during wartime and how women, they were so successful and got out there and ran the planet. And, uh, in wartime is all created for them to make money off of like their whole fucking thing is such shenanigans. It's so ridiculous. Like, <laughs> It's so seriously like waking up in the most ridiculous fucking movie. And the movie doesn't even know what genre it is. It's just all fucking all over the place. Half the time it's a fucking horror movie. Some of the times it's just a sci-fi. It's basically a horror movie. Uh, it's basically, we woke up in a horror movie. <laughs> so it is, um, the, uh, but, but see then they wanted, um, the women to want to be out, to, to feel like it's a threat to them, to feel like it's a competition. Like, and they pushed that so hard. Anyone who's older remembers how they pushed so hard on that. They pushed it in movies, in TV shows. I, I think back probably around the time of Mary Tyler Moore and, um, you know, she, she was no longer on the Dick Van Dyke show. She was a go-getter woman, you know, on, on, um, when she was Laura Petrie. Then she was, or uh, Petrie, Laura, P I think it was Laura Petrie, Petrie, I don't know. When she was married to Dick Van Dyke in that show, she was, um, you know, a homemaker and, and homemaker and bewitched. Look, all these women, they, they had, uh, they created circles. They created a foundation and communities. And they, um, you know, and a lot of us, we all thought, you know, because it was our perspective. We didn't know anything different. You know, we sure hadn't lived as locked, locked, uh, latchkey kids or any of that stuff. Like that was the next part that went on. But we all had moms who were around, but they were always hanging with their friends or having drinks or sitting around gossiping or on the phone. They were on the phone a lot. <laughs> and those fucking phones had like 20 foot of cords. Your mom's walking all around the house, talking on the phone, vacuuming. And if you came in the house, then it better be for a good time, a reason uh, or, or you're there to help clean. <laughs> that was the only thing that you had. But see, we didn't all have to clean. All we had to do was, uh, you know, clean our room. And I, I think, um, uh, you know, our moms did so much stuff. And we didn't, we didn't realize and how much that they were taken care of and how different society was. Unless you got to have the experience and you get to look back on it. And then you can see like, yeah, but the mom's making friends and having all of that. And that gave us all friends. Like we were all having play dates uh, because the moms would be together. The moms would talk about what the kids would do and stuff. Like if they would hang out in the neighborhood, you couldn't get away with shit because somebody else's mom would tell your mom because they all knew each other. Now, most of people don't even fucking know each other. If they go and they are involved in the schools, they'll meet other people's friends or other people, their kids, friends, parents. Or if they, um, their kid becomes close enough and the parents are willing to meet each other so that the kids can hang out together and like spend the night stuff. But most of the time, the parents don't get together and hang out. And before it would have been, the parents would all get together and hang out. Like there was seriously parties all the time. I swear to God, there was parties like every weekend. 
there was a party somewhere like the the young parents and stuff back then they were having a good time <laughs> and you think about this too is like and they're making like twenty dollars a week like it was not a lot of money and and we had nice houses we had everything and nothing cost that much everything was pretty cheap and um I don't know how much, you know, it could have been like really it was making like a hundred. Like my dad was already moving up in the ranks of um, success in that business uh, in Dallas. He was already like top salesman all the time. And then he ended up opening his own company. But that's also a thing too, where the, um, the backers are always there for the people who have like this charismatic personality and kind of an immoral attitude. <laughs> That's all over in our, that's the successes that get pushed through is kind of, um, you know, that they will back you up if you will, um, you know, if you don't just don't give a fuck about things. And then if you, um, have, will pull people in and get more people to look at things the way you look at things. And so I don't know when my dad started having backing and whatever. You know, I mean, he was able to open a business. I mean, because you think about it, like he was um, somebody who left Kansas, left the farm. Like he was humiliated as a child because um, they lived in a barn for a while and he was made fun of in school because they lived in a barn. So, um, you know, he had this, you know, he was going to become successful attitude. He was not going to fucking be any barn kid. And then it's so crazy, too, because once he lost it, like, it doesn't matter. This, those things are not the fixers. The, going and getting a bunch of money is not going to fix that feeling. It comes from inside. And those wounds, you know, my dad carried whatever wounds, you know, he didn't heal. He just drank. He hid from them. And so he just became a major alcoholic. And, and then eventually a drug abuser and troubled and all that and uh, you know he uh it's so wild too is like for 20 or 30 years he had like no liver we were told he had no liver he was gonna die at any moment and he kept going and going and drinking you have drinking and he thought he was so tricky because he figured out how to get coke bottles pour some of the coke out fill them with vodka put them in the freezer so then he would just get them out and take them he thought he was just so clever <laughs> And he, uh, you know, that's, um, you know, I guess that is clever, but he is, um, that's, you know, that's how he lived. And, uh, but he, when he started leaving from Kansas and stuff, like he was already strapped down with, I think that they already had three kids. Like he had married a 16 year old. He was 20, married a 16 year old. I think they had three kids. I don't know where my youngest brother was born, if he was born in, because I kept thinking he was born in Dallas, but he could have been born in Kansas, but it was, um, I just can't remember. It might have been, it would have been right. He would have been really little because my dad could have been strapped at that point with four kids, goes to a new city and starts working and is a salesman and he kept making salesman of the year and stuff. And he was, um, Cheating on my mom from the very beginning. He always cheated on my mom. He had no fucking qualms about that. And um, he even had girlfriends and everything. He ended up marrying one of his girlfriends. That ended up being my stepmom. And they had been a couple for a long time, even to the point where we were all sure that her son is really our brother. But they would they kept telling us no. It's like, because mm. his dad's supposed to be Mexican. And why does he look just like us? Like, I don't, I don't know. I think that that he looked so much like uh, all my cousins. He had white, white hair, big blue eyes, very white skin, like way more um, Scandinavian or something. So um, anyways, the um, but my dad being in that position, like people have such a hard time being able to go anywhere or do anything anymore. You know, because they have everybody so financially gripped. And so he was able to leave Kansas. And who knows how much money, you know, load up the station wagon, drive up there. I can't remember. I swear to God, the first house we got was really, really nice. 
I think the first house we got was um, on Short Meadow. I'd have to ask my mom for sure. But that how that was in like a new neighborhood where they were still building houses. There were so many kids. It was so fun. We all had so much fun. But that, oh man, I don't understand. It's hard when you put that, try and look back on things and try and put it all together. It's like there was a couple of years, like I don't even remember a couple of things. Like if, I don't, I don't know if I remember first or second grade. So. It was probably a lot of transition in there. That was probably around when we left. Because I remember kindergarten in Kansas. Because I would we lived in this little... We lived in Lenexa. And Lenexa was really, really small. There was like a little strip where there was like a little pharmacy. And um, where you could go in, it would be one of those places that had the ice cream sodas and candy and all that. But old-fashioned kind of pharmacy. And they had like a barber, you know, a couple of little things right there. And then it had railroad tracks. And that was our street that we would go down. And then once you crossed over the railroad tracks, there would be a couple other streets. One of them, if you walked, I remember it was a cemetery. So it was always scary. And when we would walk with a group of kids, it would go down to the cemetery street. And it would always scare me. But then when we walked down our street, there was a nursing home, a high-rise nursing home. And I had seen somebody fall out of their wheelchair and bleed and their blood was on the street. We never knew if they lived. And, um, so I had that traumatic thing, but I was like five years old and I would leave from that house and walk by myself through the little town, cross the railroad tracks, go down the street further to another street, turn and then go down to the school. Like that was completely normal for little kids to be walking by themselves and stuff is completely normal. And then you think also, cause you know, there would be for one thing, less traffic. It wouldn't be moms and dads both going to work. And um, the moms would all be watching, you know, it, it, I don't know. The bad people can't do as much bad stuff when you got so many eyes on you. So they had to shift the the eyes of our society. They had to get us to look the other way, to chase something. And then how much division that they could create with um between men and women and success and you know uh, and women deciding that they needed to be men in order to be successful to not even think that to run a whole household is fucking success and to be able to stay in the green and to be able to get new things and be able to take your family on trips and stuff that that's not successful like and you know and how many people like they can't save money and go on trips because they're running around getting all these practices. They got to stop at McDonald's. All that stuff it takes all your extra money. And they think that they're giving their kids more uh, opportunity. But really, most kids just want time with their parents to, you know, sit and talk, to feel like that the kids have some sort of validity to their parents, like that they matter, like that they are important. And what is the most valuable thing is your time. And so when you're giving your kid your time, that is when they feel the most love. Just running around and taking them to things. I think most kids feel like that they're doing it for their parents. They're trying to please their parents. They're trying to be good at something so their parents are happy. And there becomes a, a shift in perspective. But these are all things, you know, that we all got to learn and play out and just see from different vantage points so that we can understand as we redevelop our society. Because that's what we're doing here is we're breaking down the old one and we're shifting into a new one. And we got to look around and see. And we got to look around and see like all of our broken parts is what created the mess. And so we have to acknowledge it. We have to face it. We have to, you know, understand ourselves in order to change any of this stuff. So yeah, the, the debate to me is, yeah, I don't look at it as a woman being at home is like, that makes her less. It's like, how many girls are like, they're fighting to go and be in some kind of jobs. So many of them too, they get these big degrees and then they don't have any, um, any job that they're really working in their degree. Like my one daughter who had her degree in um, anthropology and archeology, span and was, she's working as a receptionist somewhere. So they're not really getting to follow through with their dreams. They're just having to, you know, work to get a paycheck. And so 
you know, being a successful, um, being a successful, uh, reception is like, that's all good and fine. You know, you can work your way up or whatever, but then also being, um, <sighs> running a whole household, you get a lot of skills. You have a lot of things that you are juggling. So it, 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 it builds you up. It makes you more. And that's what they don't want. They want you just to be simple and have these little mediocre jobs that really stifle you and hold you back. Don't give you much time. And now they are jacking up the prices because this is the awakening. So jacking everything up so fucking much trying to tax everything like everything is becoming so ridiculous because it is this um you know where we have to see it it, it has to get so glaring to get your attention but that is why it, everything is happening is because it's got to become so extreme to get people to pay attention and so the they're trying so much harder to just jack up the prices and Make it where it's unbearable. But that, to me, I swear to God, there is just a an accent to it of just pulling free. Just being like, nope, well, I'm not giving you any of my energy. You, you, you get none of my energy. And um, not to acknowledge them and stuff. Because there's still so many people like debating over if they should pay taxes and all that stuff. I quit paying a few years ago. It's like you, when we all just stop, but then, then, and then when the people who get attacked over it, see, that is a part of their journey. It's a part of what they're supposed to fight back. And it has to do with like their whole soul thing. That doesn't mean it necessarily is going to happen to all of us. I haven't had anything happen. I haven't had them say anything to me. And, and, you know, and I don't know how much this is, how much longer this is going to go on, but if they, even any of them come towards me or for me or whatever, I'm just going to keep saying about human rights and keep saying, Hey, I'm not participating. I'm not part of your game anymore. I'm under God's law. And that is like, you know, throwing a lightning bolt at them unless they're just so robotic, you know, and that was another part of our society that we're dealing with too. There's a big robotic uh, part where you know you have these cops just following orders doing whatever like holding that woman down face down in an ant pile while she's screaming and stuff and she's got ant bites all over her face and neck and stuff it's like they've lost their compassion they don't care in originally they were sold to us as peace officers they were a part of the community to keep the peace and then they turned into our opposition you know, the opposing force to control and contain us. And they all jumped on board. They're all like, hell yeah. And how many of them are so corrupt in create and committing things that they would take us to jail for? And they're involved. They're involved with drug stuff. They're involved. Again, there's more arrests going on. There's more stuff coming out. Like there's bad stuff that these bad cops are involved in. And that is going to be a part. Like I said, there's going to be people who thought that they were, you know, a success story. What a great husband. Man, she's got the fucking all going on. They're always going on trips and have all that stuff. And then it's going to all come to the surface. And it's going to be, you know, scarlet letter, hide your face, and humiliation. But that is, you know, again, what that soul is supposed to go through. It's a part of their cleaning up the aftermath of all their different lives. So whatever it is that they have to face is a part of what they need to face to move forward in this uh, ascension period. So, um, you know, some people are going to go through all different kinds of things like that. There's going to be hard things that people are going to go through. A lot of humiliation and embarrassment but that is a part of uh, you know the getting the ego under control and the um humbling of oneself you know to get yourself to equality and to understand you know like nobody's better than anybody else dogs aren't less than us birds aren't less than us squirrels aren't less than us that we're all the same we're all living creatures we're all living creatures experiencing what it is to be in the position of what it is that we're playing the part of. So it's all uh, advantageous to the universe. So they rely on all of that energy. And um, 
you know, I was thinking about too, is how much in life, like you go around trying on different parts, like trying to understand yourself. Because I was thinking about this period of time and my daughters have brought it up to me. So it must be probably why it sticks out because I probably have other ones too. My nose is dripping. It's like a fuck. The weather here, like, oh. It's just a fucking poison. And I just saw a video too where it showed like this balloon going over and it was just shooting this stuff down on the community, on the neighborhood. I'm sure it's all fucking night. I'm sure every time we go out, we're just breathing their pollen. Their fucking pollen poison. Um, but it, this one was when I was, um, it was while I was a nurse and it was when I had stopped working at the hospital and I got nails and I got the fake boobs. I had nails. I was putting, um, I always got streaks in my hair. I never did that whole big blonde thing, but it still had a shit ton of streaks where it was very blonde. I drove a Lexus. I was like, um, very, I don't know, like not myself. But it was like trying on something to see, you know, is this me? I'm, I'm, I like it. I feel like, you know, I feel fancy, but is it me? And, um, and it wasn't me. It wasn't something like I'm going to keep up on nails, which I just am still so impressed with my nails. Like you just have no idea. And I don't know if it's the minerals now and knowing the Moringa, knowing how much of the stuff that I drink, the tea stuff is so good for me. Uh, just learning more about that, but also taking the biotin. And I take three, two or three every day. One doesn't do shit. And, um, but oh my gosh, my nails, they're becoming, and the other day I was digging in rocks and my nails didn't break. It was like my right hand is shorter than the other one, but still... I was like, dang, my nails are so nice. <laughs> but after I had those nails off, they, oh my God, they were so tore up. And I am seeing more things about women talking about like how bad that is, like all that poison and how much they tear up your nail and stuff. And so I think it's good to get off of them. And I'm not telling you, mine were like paper and mine would not grow. They would not grow at all. <clears throat> I could scratch my face. Well, get a paper scratch. I swear. I think I did that right here. But, um, but the, uh, they were like razor sharp and super thin, but now they're like thicker and heavier and they haven't been this way since I was young. And it's got to be with the nutrients. I don't think it's just the biotin because I've taken biotin before and not had, um, my nails do this. I think it's all of the stuff together. It's getting just more nutrition. And um, I, I feel like that this is changing. And I ordered another bottle of magnesium. So the magnesium is going to come because I want to see. I'm going to be done with the selenium, which I was thinking, I don't think the selenium really did too much. and um, But I don't know. We'll see. But I now I want to see. I've taken the magnesium pills again, if that makes a big change. Because I feel like... That is going to, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Like that, when this very first started, like I thought this was going to be gone in a month. <clears throat> and how it has, um, you know, it's, it just takes a bit longer. So, but it keeps going. Like I swear, I just keep seeing improvements in, um, even my mom, like she just did her copper water, it, her first one. And she said that she woke up feeling so much more energized. And I said, it's just uh, going to keep going up from there. He's like, you just don't realize how depleted you are of minerals until you start putting them back in. And it's like, fuck yeah, man. Like, and then you start seeing aging going the other direction. And it's so weird, too, because I was thinking about, like, these women who are all about, like, aging and loving yourself and stuff. And it's like, no, I'm not, I'm not about aging. I'm going the other direction. I'm about health, taking care of myself. And aging is a, a part of their surrendering. And so, um, but that is going to be the, you know, the split. And we'll see how this shuffles out. But anyways, you know, over the car and stuff like that. Then uh, my next thing, I think it was, uh, and I don't know if it was right away my next car. But it was like I got a Jeep, and that was uh, always uh, way more of me. That's way more of my personality. 
not makeup -y, not coloring my hair, uh, not fake boobs. God, I can't believe how glad I am. I'm, oh, fuck. And, I, I, and it's so weird, too, like, to look at my body and to be like, oh, my gosh, this this is what got me so... Um, now I, I can accept it. Now I'm just like, well, well, this is my body. But before, it was so much of the push to try and change it or be perfect or be good looking or whatever the fuck. Whatever. It'd be the standardized look. You know, big boobs, blonde hair, fucking whatever uh, look they push on us. And then we all, oh, yeah, that looks good. Let's do it. And so, but then I just found myself as being much more of like, much more natural, much more of a, like, don't have, put on any makeup, put on some cutoffs and a tank top, go get your dog, go in the Jeep, go out, you know, find some place and, uh, you know, camp out or hang out or do something that is, um, I don't know, fun, not go way out. Like I don't want to go way out into the woods where the, the skinwalkers and stuff are like, not like that, but there is, like, you can go driving. I don't know. When I had a Jeep, it was, like, it was fun because, like, I would pull up. If I pull up at the road and there would be all this traffic, I would just jump up on the sidewalk and go up around it and just go and turn onto the other road. Like, it was just, I don't know. It just felt like you had more control. And you could just go out into any kind of um, ro uh, roads any kind of mountain, any kind of roads or hills or whatever. And you could go out and drive in them. You didn't have to go way out and be out in Creepyville with stairs popping up and portals and shit. You could just go out and, um, I don't know, drive. And I, I like to drive. Uh, I love to have the top off and to have the music going and then to drive with the wind in your hair that's why it's like i'm not a motorcycle person i've been on motorcycles but i'm definitely a jeep person but now i really um the, i really wanted a bronco but those um the old ones where the top comes off they're harder to get now but they're bringing them back but like, I don't know what it's going to be our future with cars and how much longer we're even going to be driving jalopies. It seems like that there's more falling apart about the car situation and the loans. Like that's one thing. There's so many cars that are being um, confiscated, taken back by the banks. So that's going to be a part of, you know, it's financially uh, goes the wrong direction. Is it got all these cars that you know, nobody's buying, and so um, uh, I don't know. I don't know how because I know we're going to end up in flying cars. I just don't know how long it's going to take. But I do know that there is going to be this big jump. It will be like a quantum jump, just like you know, like when you think about how the energy of us, how the wave gets bigger and bigger. You know, more people talking. Like, there's so many debates going, debating over, you know, if women should be in the house. And the, the women who feel like that's minimizing them, they should be out there conquering the world. They could be a CEO, too. It's like, well, if you want to be a CEO, you better be have no morals. Don't give a shit about people. Be willing to dedicate it because that's what they're looking for. They're not just looking for your genius. Uh, they don't give a fuck about that. As a matter of fact, if you want to do anything good for people, they would just rather you, you know, stay working in um, the, you know, the more opening, beginning uh, jobs that they allow where they start. Is everything is like their funnel system so that they can funnel in the corruption and the people who carry that kind of energy, you know, they move forward. And but that is like, look how much of that is just coming out of how many people, like there's so many bad people. They all like, oh yeah, let's hire the other bad guy. And so it's just going to be this tumbling, tumbling, tumbling that's going to continue. But the, um, that energetic wave of the change of the people all seeing the outrage and stuff and the more storms and more storms coming in in that building and building and building but then there will be um you know like a finale 
There will be like a storm that's going to, or something. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know. I mean, it could be a fucking horrible earthquake. It could be a fucking volcano. And, you know, I think I'm by two volcanoes. It could be the goddamn, um, damn Yellowstone. That's supposed to be like, that's a super volcano. It could be something like that. It could be a nuke attack, which, you know, remember that they can't really do that. It's all a bunch of words. And, um, but there's also got all these people thinking if they, if they do attack that way, hurry and pop this P-I-L-L in your mouth so it doesn't affect you when there's not, a, I don't know about the radiation and the C-E-M-P, like all the stuff that they're doing. I just know that the one that they threaten us with, that they can't do that one, and it, that there's certain pills, and if you take them and you don't have that stuff in it that's supposed to help, that it can be really toxic to you. So a whole bunch of people pop in, the, you know, like an iron pill all of a sudden, and they don't have something that they're trying to get out of them like that, that that can be really toxic. Because I looked it up because I was going to get some because they were pushing so hard on that. And, um... And not knowing it, like, or so much of that stuff, I just put it out into the universe. It's like, okay, well, if that's what you want me to do. Bring me that. Like the same thing with Louie. If that's what, you know, if he's supposed to be my dog, then we'll, we'll see in July, you know, is more towards then. Because by then I'll be more caught up. I'll have gone and visited and then come back home. And then, um, you know, that would be more the time to get one or go on more trips, but there's all these other things, you know, I'm waiting for this change to happen, this shift to occur too. So that, um, you know, I, like I want to get a van or a camper or something. And those vans that I had seen, they, um, they're so cute. Um, I can't remember what the website is. It's like you no Y U M E it's in Dallas. Um, Texas, but they have got all these um, Volkswagen camper vans from Brazil or something and brought them, but a lot of them are in the 90s. Like, they were driving these over in the 90s. They look like they're from the 60s, but they're from the 90s, but they're longer, too. They're more extended. They have a lot more windows. They're more like a smaller camper, so that is, like, way more reasonable to be able to drive, you know, for me to be able to drive around in than a big old giant camper like that is the thing i would not want to have a or a, a car with a trailer thing he's like i don't know i just see some of these mountain things it's like no i don't want something big like that and then a wind knock you off like uh, but you know if that happens that's supposed to happen <laughs> like i do know that but um but still I would rather prefer to drive something that was more manageable for me. So anyways, I, I'm still manifest. But to me, I'm kind of manifesting. Like I'm just, just like a free fall. Like you just like you're putting out the energy and you just got to see where is it going? You know, well, what's next? What What's coming for me? And, you, you know, just see. And then that, that is like the trust fall. It's like your trust fall back into the universe of like, okay, well, you know, I trust you guys. And there's nothing you can do either. Like you can fight it. You don't have to trust fall. You can fight it. You can try and force things and do things the way you want. But, you know, it's not going to go the way you want. The only way that things go, to me, I think that they go the way you want is when you trust fall back. Because I think that the way you want is predetermined. And they're just reminding you. And so then you fall into that and you're like, okay, I'm trusting. And then that's where you end up being in the place you want to be. It's when you're trying to force things and you want it to go a certain way and you want to make things happen faster or whatever. Then that is where you can start running into problems because you, your lessons about this learning how to trust the universe, trust, and that is a trust to yourself, see, because it's like a trust into your higher self. And, um, and don't forget too, like some, like to me, kind of this ascension thing is kind of like this, um, I'll swallow for a sec, it is, um, 
this breaking free from your higher self. It's not like, because there's a union to your higher self. It's like your higher self starts helping you along this journey. So you have to be in connection with your spiritual side of you. And that helps you along this journey. And then um, to me, it's more of like the people who they are, they have a higher self that is a, an expression of a whole bunch of players at once. Like, you know, they're, they're saint, they're, they're God, their higher self is uh, expressing in a lot of players. So it can, it is an energy that has a lot of identification of itself and can put out a lot of players out there. And it, but then you think about the player coming into its own. And so like say, you know, you're from a higher self that had like a hundred players in this game. And so you, some of you start coming into conscious awareness and start questioning things and start self-identifying that breaks you free from the higher self. So then you start developing as a higher self. So it is like, that is a part of the expansion. And I don't, I, I don't know if I'm right or whatever. This is how I see it. This is how I understand and so, you know, and maybe I'm off on my understanding. That's where you got to go in and ask yourself, like, does this make sense to you? Because you'll remember inside of you if it makes sense to you because the memory is already there. It's just, you know, us talking about these things reminds you. So then you're like, oh, yeah. So, um, you know, and it may not have anything to do with you. So, you know, it may not have anything to do with your story. So it may have no significance at all. It just sounds like a bunch of hogwash. But, um, but I think that there are souls who are here, uh, you know, who do find comfort in that, you know, God over me mentality. But then when they can break free into becoming self-identifying and, um, and self-identifying is like, the, you know, figuring out, like, uh, do you like driving a Lexus or do you like driving a Jeep? Like, figuring yourself out. Who are you? What are you? Are you this? Are you that? Are you this? Are you that? And uh, so you developing yourself in being more identified as how you look at yourself, then that is the, the, the ascension, the, the creation of the self the creation of a separate being that I think in the ascension, so you don't die and go back and absorb back into that energy. You don't go back and become a part of your higher self again. You go and, um, yeah, it's weird. Um, cause even if you go in it, to become your higher self, it's weird. Because all that energy is a creation even inside of itself. Like you would, it wouldn't be like you would not, you, 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 it wouldn't be like you wouldn't have any idea of who you were. I think that's part of the fear. And I think that is a part of the ability of where they say that they can reabsorb energy that's too negative and that they can, you know, put it back out in a more positive because it can go through you know, with the others or something like it, the poles, it, it seems like that they can create, like if you were, like if you were in your higher self and you still were questioning, you were still had an idea of yourself, it would be more like dreaming and stuff. Like you could still, you would still be experiencing. It wouldn't be like you had no experience because once you're an energy of your own self, but this to me is this breaking free so you don't die and get reabsorbed into that kind of energy that you stay as an identifiable self. And so that is where you just move on and where you become your soul instead of being, you know, going back and dying and being a part of your higher self or something. You go through this period of time of learning and growing from all of your different lives, not just like from this one, from all your different experiences and your learn and grow and stuff. And then you expand into, um, 
this self-identifiable being that is going towards, uh, you know, uh, enlightenment, going towards the spiritual self, um, the spiritual attitude. And then as they go and they, um, you know, like elaborate themselves into becoming themselves it is the going into your soul just like how i had said how like here there's some beings that aren't in um well i don't know because there's some that are yeah shapeshifters and oh, see she just jumped up because that sore back there all of a sudden starts hurting her and i don't know if it is herpes like how the hell would she have gotten it? They're spraying viruses on this, I swear to God. And then they're giving stuff to make that virus come out in people. And, um, but her to be licking it and licking it. It's like, fuck, that doesn't seem good. Oh yeah. And another thing too is, um, like she's had two, uh, horse paste to, to yesterday and today. And, um, but one thing, and I shared the video of this doctor talking about it, about all C-A-N-C-E-R is a pair of things, and um, they will call them proteins and stuff. And this one guy was talking about how your body will create tumors to hold them all in. So we'll take all these proteins, these worms and stuff, and it will uh, put them in. Hold on. So that you take those, um, you take them and then you encapsulate them and that is like a tumor. And so then when you buzzed open a tumor, then you're letting all that stuff out. So all that parasitic stuff, that is like what I'm kind of thinking. So when that thing opened on the back of her leg, if that didn't put way more parasites into her body, and then, you know, there are chemical assault all the time, that that, that makes um, the weaker immune system. And then if they're spraying out certain sicknesses, then you, uh, you know, your body will react to these different things because it's so depleted. So I'm going to do the horse pace for the next few days and see if that doesn't, um, you know, get rid of some of these cysts too, because it seems like she had a big breakout with those too. So anyways, and I think the cysts I can kind of monitor on her is being like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay attention. Like if this bout of paste makes those go way small, then I'm going to be thinking, okay, so every time those get inflamed, I'm going to think that that is a part of her body showing that she is under some kind of assault, inflammation kind of thing. So um, we'll see. But anyways, that is another thing is about those um those even when they explained it and it's also weird because if you remember when I talked about when I thought I had lung cancer and they had they were checking something on my stomach and the MRI showed my lungs and then they called me at home and they said um your MRI your MRI shows something in your lungs and so we got to have you come tomorrow we got to check and that night I was bawling because I was already a nurse and I already knew like when they see stuff in your lungs, it's not good. And, um, and I've also had them see these things in my brain and stuff. And, um, and they always be like, oh, they're fine. They're just, they're just these like little proteins. And so that's what they told me when they saw mine and they said, oh, they're benign. It's just these little proteins. You know, some people get them. Well, now I look at it very differently and those were my lungs. I don't even know what the fuck I was breathing in. I was working in the hospital. No telling what the fuck I was breathing in. They probably purposely make us sick. I mean, they make sure you take all these. So, yeah. It's like, you know, you know, we were the people who believed in that system. You know, we would push it on other people. We got to trust science. It's like, you know, that's bad karma. <laughs> the way I look at it is like, oh my God. I wish I would have not guided anyone towards that stuff but everybody has their own lessons and you know we're not meant to be perfect we're not meant to know everything ahead of time you know we're meant to go through the experiences and learn and take those views and look at things and see yourself and 
understand yourself. But I do think that that is a part of this ascension period is where then the the soul stays the soul it doesn't it doesn't go back it just like develops into a whole higher self and i think that there's some people who are already their higher selves here as like healers and stuff like that to help people to be able to to um to direct people it through this process of becoming your higher self so you don't just go back and reabsorb into it. but although there is this parts of the heaven where there's souls that just stay out and go you know into different parts but those ones is where i'm thinking are they um are those ones that become their higher self or is that you know just like that that one girl who had that d that um near-death experience thing and she pointed over at that uh, this castle place where you know only these certain souls could go but are those um it was that castle even like a higher self like i said it's a it's its own experience like you'd still be having experiences because it is it is like its own amusement park so even if you're a part of that you still can stay a part of yourself but i don't know I don't know. There's just so much to this whole heavens and everything is in us and we're not really going places, but we're moving. Like it's, I don't know. There's just a lot to it. Um, but you know, I know this is all about this graduation. Keep going towards you, keep going towards self-identifying figuring yourself out understanding yourself and it all is going to have a part to move us in society to rebuild restructure our society so that there will be more if they have girls like right now who are being all judgy over stuff that they don't have the full view of it they don't know a lot of them were latchkey kids a lot of them's moms were working a lot of them's had a uh, single moms they all had you know they come from experience of broken homes and they want to be out there and being successful and so um but anyways you know and i just think that it's going to have some changes like that and not to say you know women need need to be trapped in a relationship i think that the relationships are going to be changing i think men are learning a lot women are learning a lot everybody's having to go through these periods of um reflection and looking at things they've got discussion after discussion going on where people are uh, debating it but there is no wrong or right there is no set thing well this is for sure no it's you know it's where people can become happy and content and you know it's not going to just be all one size fits all it's going to be a lot of different realities just like right now we have a lot of different realities and it's all like a lot of bad shit a lot of bad shit all the time and you know what i looked up this morning because i was thinking about um you know there's so many buddhists there is like so many people who already believe in reincarnation so then i looked it up and they said no christianity is 31 percent of the people 30 percent is islam and um and then it's like 17% is um, Buddhist or Hindu. And then, um, what was the other one? Because there was one other thing that I had said. But I was like, that does not seem, like, especially for how many people in some of these um, countries over there, like China and Japan and, uh, I don't know, North Korea, South Korea, philippine like all of these different places that um i would think that there would be like I, even in india so i don't know i was thinking they're lying why would they if the christians were the top why would they feel so threatened but look at how they're creating such a division right now with the islam and the christians like they're and then they put those two at the top so i don't know uh and there's a whole thing it said about that islam is uh, like a oldest 
it's like from the 600s or something like it's really old um but i don't know they're just trying to create division and trying to get people to not see the truth because truth is is you're just born over and over and over and all this other stuff is created to i don't know make you not be productive while you're here make you fight over stuff that doesn't matter make you focus your energy on stuff that doesn't matter I don't know. But everybody's got to figure it out for themselves. Like, everybody's got to look at things and see things more clearly for themselves. So, anyways. And my daughter is on her way. So, she'll be here. So, I'll see tonight. I like, fuck, last night was rough. It was, um, she woke up at, I think, like, at 2. And it was weird. Cause she just jumped up, just like she did a second ago. She just like, jumped up and ran to the front door. And I was like, man, she must have to go potty because that paste that I gave her. And so I jump up and go. And then I don't know, she just went outside and she ran down the stairs. So I don't know if her stomach was bugging her, but then she just sat down. This I don't know if it, if it is herpes, it would be a lot of tingling and pain. It would be a lot of aching. Whatever it is, I, I think it's something. I keep telling her, this is where she's so smart. So I keep telling her, it's going to heal slower if you go out and lick it. And so she snuck outside and she's looking out, went to the door and said something. She looks and I, but she's always listening when I'll say stuff. I'll say, um, and she'll stop. Like she, uh, man, I swear the more you just treat your dog, like communicate to it, like it has intelligence, the more its intelligence will meet up with what you're communicating. I just think it just happens that way. So, um, whatever um oh yeah because uh we were up for hours and then um i don't know finally we went back, went back to sleep and then woke up and it was light outside i was telling because she wants to get up and go outside and do all this stuff uh and i was like dude it's still nighttime people are still sleeping just running through the yard barking it's like girl these fucking wacko people fucking come out and shoot you they don't even want their own dog to bark Sure the hell don't want the neighbor's dog to bark. Oh, yeah, and another horrific story. I don't even know which city this is, but this shows, like, what the fuck is wrong with people? This man who lives in this house, from the front of the house, looks like a nice house, looks like a nice neighborhood, and he's got four pit bulls, and he just keeps them outside all the time. And so they're in his backyard. He has these really tall trees. Well, the pit bulls chased a raccoon up to the top of this tree. This raccoon has been up there going through the weather day in and day out for almost a week. Up there, not eating, nothing. And they've been boycotting. They've had a protest at his house. They've been calling the authorities. They've been doing everything. He won't, he, he won't let the raccoon out. He won't pull his dogs in and let the raccoon go to safety. They're, they're, it's out, they're out there all day, all night long, trying to get up in this tree to get this raccoon. This raccoon's terrified, hanging on for dear life. It's been awake and um, not eaten for all this time. All the people in the neighborhood are freaking out and trying to do something. So now the guy has said, if anybody comes out on his property, he's going to shoot them. And um, they've tried to get the authorities involved. And so hopefully I'll see more updates on that. But like so much. Like, this fucking guy went and adopted a dog and then cut its head. I, 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 I just, this, the horrible shit that it just keeps going and going. Like, I feel bad for that grandpa when he told the hospital, please don't send this baby home with my son and his girlfriend or wife or whoever the hell. I think it was his girlfriend. And then within nine days, barely even a week and a half, and they already had killed the baby. And the guy's just like freaking out. The, the dad is not only now is he lost a granddaughter, but now his son's going to go to prison. And he knew, he saw a problem. But, you know, these are the soul things that are playing out. There's lots of big stuff playing out. And it's horrible. And even this guy, you know, go get that rescue. And then that's a serious soul connection. Like, you're going to feel the depth of what you've done when you go to your life review. So... There's nothing getting away with shit. Like, this is serious stuff. And people hurting animals and hurting people and stuff. Like, this is this is big, what's going on here. And, um, you know, just all I can say is you just got to keep facing yourself. Like, keep facing yourself 
And don't get all caught up, you know, in thinking like, oh, well, it happened to them. Now it's going to probably happen to me. Everybody has their own stuff playing out. Just like what I was saying, like, whereas, you know, we've been in this place where it's been all this horrible stuff in the Middle East and all this stuff of treachery and genocide, all this murder, murder, all that going on for so long. And now, you know, this is the, the shift out of that because it's going to be all good realities coming up. But they're not all going to be all the exact same. Just like, you know, how there's differences. Like if you go to New York or you go to California, or you, there'll be different places. Different communities will adapt to a certain energy. So that will be a good thing that people will be able to go find places where they feel like they belong. And so anyways, there's going to be a lot of stuff that's going to be changing. And, you know, we're just at the part where everything is still breaking apart and it hasn't even totally broken. It's really just kind of giving the womp, 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 like the backup signal, like it's fucking about to go. <laughs> so that is, you know, everything is going to break apart and that is going to be the shifting. And there will be like that, <clears throat> that quantum jump, like we will jump through the healing and we'll jump into new phases and so there will be a jump in our, um, in our technology. There'll be a big jump in our, in the way we live, a lot of stuff. So I don't know. It's going to just, you guys just keep buckled up. And to me, the most important thing is just keep focusing on yourself. Keep working on healing, whatever keeps coming up, keep working on you. That, you know, that's what everybody should be doing. And everybody will see the benefits of that soon. They're just you know, putting band-aids on everything and trying to, like, you got so many people panicking right now and all oh, another fucking huge debate going on the Gen X thing. Like, I don't even know, but it, that has got a lot of people up in a rumble and where, you know, they're ready. It's like, but that is a wave. That's part of the storm. It's part of how things are going to come into being. So, you know, through the whole thing, you got to just keep remembering to love yourself, to love everyone, and have a loving day. And I'll talk to you later.